Welcome back. Maryland has some of the most stringent gun control laws in the country. It already requires a state permit to own a handgun. It requires firearm registration. It bans certain models of firearms like assault pistols and rifles. It is illegal to have a magazine with greater than 10 rounds. We have a red flag law and it requires background checks for private sales, not just from gun dealers. And yet there are five additional gun control bills being debated by the General Assembly. Mara say, we'll go to you first. Do we need additional gun control laws? Absolutely, absolutely. And we see this as a bold move from obviously the majority here having you know the judicial proceedings chair as uh, the main sponsor for Senate Bill number one. That is you know that is a, a um, an absolute priority for obviously for the majority there. We understand that Senator uh, Wildstriker's bill will now also prohibit the uh, the use or the carry or carrying any kind of firearm in someone's property without their consent, and then also uh, within a hundred yards of any public accommodations ranging from hotels to restaurants, etc. So I think that th that is a uh, you know that is a sign that the the General Assembly will be moving in that direction, and I think that that's something that we should be implementing in the state of Maryland. Absolutely. Well, you know, speaking as an attorney, I, I question, you know, the wisdom of some of the of these laws as to whether or not they violate the Second Amendment of the Constitution, in that it, it allows individuals to to bear arms for their for, for private protection. So, how do we square that, Marisa? Absolutely. So the 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 standard was actually the question in the Bruin case, and it's my understanding that the Fifth Circuit was looking into this. the 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 question there was whether the policy that's being reviewed, if that was applicable in the 18th century. Um, and so, you know, I think that if we were to bring that into the Fourth Circuit, um, I think that our, you know, that our, 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 our legislation would, there's very, there's very strong arguments that, that, you know, we're living in, in a different time. We're not in a, you know, militia era. We have, you know, you're walking into places where you have to figure out whether somebody, you know, because of a, a, a bar situation, if they're carrying, it's just a different time. And I think that, you know, I think it's something that uh, we need to look at in terms of the times that we're living in. And if and if our legislation matches with, you know, the actual practices of modern society. You know, uh, before I go to uh, Lori on this, I'll say, you know, we, we, I remember 10 years ago when we were discussing some of the gun control laws at that time. You know, the, the greatest advocates who came up to me after the, the conversation were uh, crew members uh, uh, that were uh, on the, uh, the, the production crew who told me that they privately own guns because they're afraid for their, their, their own protection because of the rough neighborhoods they live in. So I'm not sure that, you know, the, the legislature is taking this all into account. And Lori, I know you testified uh, before the General Assembly on this issue, but I will point out that California has even more strict gun control laws than Maryland, and yet it saw four mass shootings in the month of January. So do gun control laws really do anything? Do we need additional gun laws? No, uh, not this not this type of gun law like that's that's in Senate Bill One, especially because Senate Bill One is an attempt to just take whatever the Supreme Court decided and just crunch it up and <laughs> throw it away um, because the Supreme Court ruled that a person with a concealed carry weapon um, does not uh, does no longer need he no longer needs a proper cause to to go outside of the home that you could actually protect yourself outside of the home yet this law or this bill that they're trying to pass says you can't go within 100 feet of a public um, governmental building or a private building if you don't have consent you but there are so many private buildings that are businesses and so basically you can't go anywhere uh and and there i when i was testifying i was talking to a lot of gun owners um uh, and learned a lot. Um, they were complaining that they can't even, you know, go to um, uh, stop at a restaurant after they go hunting because they will have the gun still in their truck, and then and and that is a violation of this law. And they could go to jail for up to a year for with a misdemeanor. That is just not. Um, it, it's it, this this law, if it passes, will protect. Um, criminals more than it protects citizens. I mean, people. I mean, this law is aimed at the people who um, are, are law-abiding citizens. Um, and if you look at um, at 2010, for example, in the Discovery Building, there was a man named James Lee who was holding people hostage. 
and he had a backpack with um, bombs and a gun. And if it wasn't for an off-duty police officer, um, who knows what would have happened because he saved all the people inside um, working with the police uh, who were on duty trying to solve the problem. And guess what? He was told, that, that man was told uh, years ago by the judge to never go within 500 feet of the discovery building and did did that stop him no so, so yeah, Laura, this is not Laura, I, gotta, I want to i want to give mara say the last word here because you know obviously this is you know a subject that that many people feel threatened them both on pro and con so Mar mara say you have the last 30 seconds absolutely i would just say that the legislation and all of them that, that prohibit the use they make an exception for military or law enforcement or anybody that needs to carry or uh, carry as part of their scope of, of their employment. So that would cover off-duty officers as well. And I think- yeah, But it doesn't know, cover the, you know, the guy the guy at 7-Eleven who, is, who uh, has somebody come in at three o'clock in the morning, you know, and wants to rob the place. I mean, that, you know, that's not part of their job is to have, have a gun for private protection, but they still may need one. So how do and you balance I, that? And and so and so that that is a philosophical that's that's a philosophical issue where you and I disagree. So okay. I don't think I don't think that individuals that don't have the proper training that don't understand uh, what they're getting them, themselves into um, should have uh, have and it's really about the access to guns. And we've seen that since the Supreme Court ruling that in the state of Maryland there has been a surge in uh, people asking for these permits from 16,000 to 80,000. Sure. So well, and they have proper training. Uh, those people have, have plenty of training. Right, we got it. We got to cut it off. I, I, I disagree. Right, we got to end it here. Yeah.